underneath this heading, um, I want you to write a single word. Which is why. <coughs> now, um, I'm, I'm preempting this question because I, I teach maths, so all the time I get asked, why are we, why, why are we learning this? Like, what's the point? Um, in some ways, I don't need to ask that question of you guys because as you're 11 students, you have chosen to do this subject and you're like, well, this is kind of what I signed up for. But at the same time, I think you will gain something, even if this is not a burning question in the back of your mind or the front of your mind, I think you will gain something about knowing why the quadratic function is something that we care about. Okay? Um, in mathematics, you know a lot of topics. Uh, I listed some of them just now. Okay? Mathematics is no more about those topics like algebra, trig, geometry, quadratic functions. It's no more about those topics than, say, uh, modern history is about World War II. Or, or English is about Othello. Othello, World War II, they're just what I would call um, a useful avenue along which to explore the ideas and the concepts and the skills that the course is really about. Does that, does that make sense? So English is about um, being able to communicate through a narrative with compelling characters and uh, be able to help someone change their perspective on the way they view the world. Right? And you can pick any poem, any, any text, any movie to do that, um, so long as it's got sufficient interesting material within it, so long as it's been well crafted. Um, and any kind of historical situation can also tell you what you need to know in terms of the tools of modern history. Now, the topics in the maths course that you guys are studying are exactly the same. Uh, we could have chosen, like there are, you might experience like 10%, 10% of all of the different topics of mathematics throughout, like it takes 13 years, and all you even get to look into is 10%. Because there's 90% of stuff which is just like, it's either, it's either too hard, takes too long, is too abstract, we, we just don't have the time, and so we're very selective. So how did quadratic functions make the cut? Why, why are they something which we thought, like Othello, like World War II, okay, this is gonna be really useful. Quadratic functions are, well, you can all, uh, write for me the general quadratic function. The quadratic function that for different values is every single quadratic function out there. I would probably start it off with ax squared and then how would I finish it? Plus, okay, I'm not thinking about the general form of straight line. And this is just a function of x. So it's actually just going to be bx plus c. Okay, so this is a general quadratic function. You can see because we're, we have function notation now, we developed earlier in the year, so that's what I'm using. Okay. What makes this a quadratic function? That's not a rhetorical question. What makes this quadratic, yeah? The exponent Yeah, this, this index right here, that power. Once you've got that two there, in some ways it actually doesn't matter what other stuff is there, it's just peripheral. The two is what characterizes this, that's a quadratic, okay? Now, quadratics are more complicated than if I change that power, if I make it smaller. Uh, any straight line, I suppose, since I've got you know, y as a subject, any straight line could be written in this form, right? If I'm thinking about functions of x. You change the power, you reduce it, and you have an object of um, accordingly less complexity. It's a much simpler object. And that's why you guys start learning about them like back in year eight, I think you actually, the first time you actually draw one of these and you know what a picture of. That's when you go down in complexity. It's nice, it's accessible, but it's sort of boring. <laughs> They don't do very much, which is why you move on from them quite quickly. If, on the other hand, you go up, we've never really had to work with this, and I'll show you the reason why. What would the general form of a cubic be? How would you invent a way to write that? What would you say? Yeah. AX cubed. Yep. Such imaginative creatures, mathematicians, right? So this, is, this could be any cubic, right? And one of the reasons why, you know, we never really talk about the general form of a cubic is because while this object here is accessible and boring and simple, almost too simple, this object here, despite just changing the power by one, just completely goes off the deep end, okay? Example, this thing here, if you want to find when it's equal to zero, if you want to find when this whole thing is equal to zero, we have a formula for this, right? What is the formula? x is equal to minus b plus or minus very, very good, all over. Okay, so the quadratic formula 
is fairly nice and easy to access, and that's why you already know what it is. There's a formula for cubics as well. And as soon as I show it to you, you will realize why we don't learn it. This is the formula for a cubic. Um, x is equal to the cube root of, and then, and then it begins, okay? Now, <laughs> when you have a look at this, it's just like, oh yeah, okay. As a person in charge of deciding what's gonna make the cut, what kinds of topics are we gonna have a look at? It's like, should we go to the next level? Because we did this level, linear functions. We spent like three, four weeks on it. Well, now we're going to this. Are we going to go this way? Yeah, I, I, I don't think we want to go that far, right? Um, there is also a quartic formula, which as you can imagine, is even worse than that. And then when you get to a power of five, what would you call a power of five? Five? You call it a quintic? Guess what? Amazingly, there not only is no formula, there's no quintic formula, uh, mathematicians have proved there can't be a quintic formula. They've proved it's actually impossible, which is kind of crazy. Like, we proved that something can't be. So, therefore, you guys know the story of Goldilocks, right? Goldilocks and the three bears, okay? Quadratic functions are in the Goldilocks zone uh, when we think about polynomials. They're not too boring and simple. They actually do something interesting in terms of derivatives, turning point, all that kind of thing. Uh, and they're not too hard, they're not inaccessible. That's why we spend so much time on these objects, because they are something you can manipulate, but they're interesting enough that when you do manipulate them, you get cool things out of it. Okay?